So we are discussing how to evaluate the dynamic earth pressures for the uh, I mean uh, stability analysis of the retaining walls and we saw that for that purpose we took the column wedge Coulomb's wedge theory uh, which was proposed in 1776 so as the basis and then Monomobe Okabe uh, they made some modifications to that particular uh, concept and then they arrived at a solution where we can find out the earth pressures, the various earth pressures, the active and the passive as well as active and as well as passive earth pressures or basically the coefficient of earth pressures. Considering earthquake loads or dynamic loads as a pseudostatic in uh, in a pseudostatic manner in a pseudostatic analysis so the basic thing is that it is a pseudostatic analysis so what we do is that instead of taking the actual dynamic loads we replace that with an acceleration in the required direction right and we assume that that force is constantly being applied it is like a stat static force just like the weight W so it is also a static force which is acting on the wedge so using that concept we draw the force diagram so we have the W we have the reaction force F then we have the horizontal coefficient uh, I mean the horizontal force due to the uh, horizontal I mean uh, the pseudostatic uh, assumption regarding the horizontal acceleration then we have the similarly the vertical force and ultimately what we do is we close the force polygon we close the force polygon and we find out what is the resultant so that is the dynamic earth pressure so in case of static uh, purely static analysis these two particular forces will not be there so we saw that this is the force polygon and we found out that uh, for various angles of inclination of this particular slip surface so we have to assume one slip surface and then only we can apply this concept all right so uh, various researchers they have ultimately deduced which is the minimal slope angle minimal slope angle alpha a for the maximum active earth pressure All right. or the uh, optimum that is the critical slope angle basically the critical slope angle so if if we consider this as slip surface then also the uh, earth pressure coefficient and the earth pressure itself will decrease if we consider a lower slope angle also then also the pressures will decrease so this is the most critical the most optimum where the earth pressure is the maximum All right. so whenever if there is a failure if there is active case developed so it is most likely that the soil wedge will form along this particular uh, I mean slip surface so we have uh, deduced the coefficient of active earth pressure all right, for pseudo static case right and we have found out what are the various parameters so ultimately it all uh, theta is known so theta is the slope angle of the back of the wall with the vertical so this is theta then what is delta delta is the angle of friction between the wall and the soil wedge so that is the friction between the soil and the uh, wall uh, then we have so then we have psi 
So psi is basically given by uh, kh right by 1 minus kv so tan inverse so it is basically the I mean the angle that the resultant if we consider this is wkh and this is wkv and we obtain one resultant so that is at the angle of psi so that is the angle psi all right then beta is the angle of the inclination of the backfill phi is the angle of internal friction of the soil now one thing we have to uh, one thing is missing here is obviously the cohesion component of the soil if there is cohesion right so then we uh, one is, that is the cohesion here so similarly as in the active case also in the passive case we found out all right, and, and uh, the other thing to consider is that uh, so while analyzing for dynamic increment so we have to find out what is the increment so we know that for a static case we will have a active earth pressure all right and for a dynamic case also we will have an active earth pressure so pae minus pa is the dynamic increment all right that is the additional amount of force which is being applied due to the seismic shaking all right and we have uh, we have seen that this force the static force it always acts at the height of one third of h so basically it is uh, from the Rankine's theory it is given so we have if we have the wedge uh, earth pressure distributed in this manner so the point of application of the force is at the centroid of the triangular distribution so that is at the one third h so that is the active earth pressure so that is the active earth pressure uh, static active earth pressure all right then again this increment this particular increment so delta PAE so various researchers has given various uh, options so some researchers have said that it acts at two third of so it acts at two third of H all right and some says it acts at half of H all right so that particular point we have to keep in mind when we analyze the rotational stability of the wall okay so when we suppose uh, when we analyze the rotational stability so we take suppose about one particular point we take the moments all right so here h I mean the moment about this point so the moment acting on the wall about this point will be h by 3 all right into pa so that is the moment due to the active earth pressure in the static case then again when we will consider the moment due to the increment all right so the increment of the dynamic force so if we take h by 2 so we we will consider h by 2 into delta pae so that is the moment so you can see that if we consider now 2 by 3 h delta pae so definitely there is a little bit higher moment acting on about this particular point so these are the moments then apart from that we will have the weight of the entire wall so the weight of the wall will act through the centroid of the wall all right so we will have a particular distance all right so suppose x so whatever is the x we will have that all right or we can say if if it is inclined in both direction uh, i mean uh, in same angle so 
so if the wall is inclined in both ways at the same angle so if this is also theta and this is also theta so the centroid will be directly at the midpoint all right so if this is the base b so the weight will act at the direction b by 2 so that is the direction along which the weight will act all right so the moment about this point will be w into b by 2 so that is the moment so this is the stabilizing moment so the w into b by 2 is the stabilizing moment whereas this moment is the destabilizing moment so if we sum it up So if we sum it up, we have to have b by 2 into w is equal to h by 3 into pa, all right, and then <coughs> again uh, plus this here uh, h by 2 into delta pae. Now obviously uh, PA will always act so this is the force given by the wall so we have to consider the reaction from the soil so same amount of reaction will be there from the wall so it will be at the angle delta so we have to um, and resolve it into the horizontal and the vertical uh, this uh, components similarly also the PAE delta PAE also will act parallel to PA, PA that is all right so the force of action will be parallel so that also we have to resolve it into two direction all right so there will be one horizontal moment and one uh, I mean one clockwise moment and one anti-clockwise moment so these forces will be there all right so ultimately we will have some some addition to this one all right and here it will be uh, so we will have this one so it will be cos of delta all right so cos of delta all right and here the sine component will be adding on here in this uh, i mean anti-clockwise uh, in the anti-clockwise one okay so here so that that part we have to uh, consider definitely so i'm just giving an example that uh, for finding out the rotational stability we have to find out what is the moments about the point so to find out the moments we need to know where the force is acting okay so yeah regarding passive also we have to again find out uh, for the force equilibrium first of all it is already done so force equilibrium is there already and for rotational stability of the wall for rotational stability of the wall we have to also check the moment equilibrium okay so this is the coefficient of passive earth pressure in the pseudo static case All right as here also in this case also we will have a the increment of passive earth pressure all right which will be passive earth uh, passive pressure uh, earth pressure in uh, dynamic zero static case minus the passive pressure in static case all right so here what we have done we have assumed the forces on the force polygon here right so same thing what we can do is we can add to the resultant of the weight of the wedge all right so the weight of the wedge we find out and we can see that for different theta for different values of theta we will have an increasing and then a decreasing pattern so we take the maximum earth pressure 
okay then we saw that so we saw so this particular uh, i mean modification to the above theory was given by prakashan saran 1966 and saran and prakash in 19 nineteen sixty eight all right so what they did was they considered the cohesion of the soil right? they considered the cohesion of the soil so what they considered is that uh, so con they consider the height of uh, tension crack here all right so they uh, here what they said that okay so they defined this height all right and then they defined a ratio so n which is here h not by h right so just uh, the things that we have to uh, I mean keep in mind is uh, what they did was they divided the wedge into different parts so one is this one all right so this applies to the previous cases also just for uh, understanding how the equations are derived so first of all is this one so that is so here you see so it is h not all right so h not into this length okay so that length will be so first of all this will be h tan alpha this one this part this part will be h tan alpha so this is h so this is h this is h so this is tan h tan alpha and similarly this one will be h tan theta i okay so here tan alpha and tan theta i right so if i want to find out what is the weight of this wedge so you need weight All right, into h not, into h not. All right, into h tan of alpha plus h tan of theta i. Okay, so h not is equal to n times of h. as uh, they have defined this ratio all right so what they have replaced is that gamma n so h they have taken out so h square tan 
alpha plus plus ten of theta i. Okay, so they obtain this. So basically, it is the area. All right, area and unit length in this direction. Unit length in this direction. So you have this volume. All right, that is the volume. And that volume into the unit weight will give you the weight of that wedge. All right, and uh, since it is a plane strain condition they are considering, so this will be infinite in this and this direction. All right, so that is the wedge. So similarly, again, so let us consider this one. So half into base into altitude. So half. So let us first uh, remove this one here. All right, so one component we have already I mean, found out. All right. So then again, so this is half into base into altitude, half into base. All right, so base is again h tan of alpha plus plus h tan of phi. Theta, theta, sorry. So this is theta 1, theta 1, okay. So that is half of base. So this is base into altitude. What is altitude? H. Okay, so H, you take it out. So half gamma H square again 10 of alpha plus 10 of theta 1. Okay, so this is that component. Okay, and obviously I think you can find out that this is, it is now obvious, so this is n of h, alright, and this is alpha, so in, since this is alpha, this is also alpha, so this is tan of a n h tan of alpha, okay, so n square h square, alright, and gamma half into base into altitude. So ultimately we find out what is the area of the wedge. Alright. So into the unit weight. So ultimately we get the wedge of the uh, weight of the wedge. So here you see So Q, they have considered here, Q is per unit area, okay. So again, one unit length in this direction. So into, so this part plus this part. So total of this part, all right. So H 10 alpha plus 10 theta 1 is this, this part, this length. So H 10 alpha is this length. H then uh, theta 1 is this length, again NH tan alpha is this length, alright, into unit length, so into Q is the weight of the surcharge, alright, the weight of the surcharge. Now again C, so C is acting in this direction, alright, C into this entire length is the force. So what is done is that, so we can divide into two components. One is in this direction and one is in this direction. All right. So we can divide into two components. So here C into H is this component. So C into H is the vertical, comp uh, sorry, horizontal component. All right. Uh, 
tan of alpha. Okay, this one, this one. Okay, so we have this as the vertical component and this as the horizontal component. Okay, so we will have two components. So one is in this direction and one is in this direction. So we have cohesion in this one. This is cohesion here and this is the horizontal component. Similarly, the addition component also. So this is the addition component. All right. And we have the addition component in this direction. All right. And similarly, the soil reaction. So here they have considered R1. In the previous, uh, I mean, diagrams, we considered F. So do not get confused with that. R1 and F is the same thing. All right. So it acts at an angle of phi to the normal. So ultimately, so we have to find out all these forces, all of these forces. All right. So these are the vertical components and these are the horizontal components. And ultimately what we have to do is we have to sum them up. So summation of forces ultimately thing is that this wedge and this wall has to be under stable condition. All right. So a constant acceleration cannot be occurring in the uh, this wall. Okay. So we have summation of forces in the horizontal direction is equal to zero and summation of forces in the vertical direction is equal to zero. So ultimately we sum them up. All right. We sum them up and ultimately we find out what is the active earth pressure. Okay. So that is how we do that. In fact, uh, uh, Prakash and Saran and uh, 1968, they have, uh, Saran and Prakash 1968, they have already given uh, the design charts, right? So for various, so only thing is that we have to first find out what is N. All right. So N is H naught by H. We have to find H naught. All right. Then we know phi and we know uh, alpha so alpha is the angle of inclination of the retaining wall so we know alpha and then gamma h square is the component frictional component of the uh, uh, this earth pressure all right frictional component component from the surcharge q into h that is a surcharge all right and there is the cohesion component and then we have the various coefficients. So all right, so coefficients for the unit weight and frictional component. So this is the coefficient. Coefficient for the surcharge placed on top of the uh, this I mean backfill surface. So that is the coefficient here. And similarly, we have the coefficient for the cohesion. All right. And from there, you can find out easily. So first of all, we have to find out the coefficient for the static case. All right. And then from there, we have to find out what is the lambda factor. All right. We, we have to find out the lambda factor. So for different, uh, so suppose for the unit weight, we have the static, uh, we have the dynamic by the static. So ultimately, we find out what is the dynamic coefficient and we place it there. We place it there and we find out the active earth pressure. Now, one other thing to consider is, of course, the weight water at the backfill. All right, so this is an important factor. So, as we have learned in our previous class, is that. So there may be two types of, uh, I mean, uh, behavior of the water in the soil. So one is the restrained water condition. So 
so restrained pore water pressure condition so in this condition what happens is uh, that that is basically for the soils which are very very low permeability all right so low permeability So here what will happen is that we will consider the total unit weight of the soil for finding out the inertial forces on the wall. Alright. So we will consider the total unit weight if it is low permeability. And of course at the top we will have the bulk unit weight. It may be dry it may be moist it does not matter we will consider the bulk unit weight all right so saturation is i um, mean it is totally dry you cannot say all right so whatever is the unit weight at the top for the un partially saturated or i um, mean uh, moist soil at the top so we will take the gamma unit weight bulk density and for the low permeable soil all right so in the restrained pore water pressure condition so what will happen is that this entire soil mass along with the water and everything it will move as a i mean as a constant i mean uh, as a composite material right so it will all all of the things will move together you know, it will uh, go sideways so that is why we will consider the total we need paid to find out the inertial forces so it, it is kh into w so w we will find out by the area area of the wedge into the gamma saturated so that is one case then another case which may occur is when we will consider so suppose if the permeability is very high So what will happen is that the water will behave as a separate unit, as a separate component in here and the soil will behave as a separate unit or a separate component in there here. So there will be two inertial forces, one due to the soil and one due to the water. Alright, so this condition is called the free pore water condition. All right. So this is called the free pore water condition. So when this condition happens, obviously the soil will behave as a separate unit, but to consider the inertial forces of the soil, we have to consider the submerged unit weight of the soil. Okay, submerged unit weight of the soil. And of course, uh, Of course, we will also have to consider the in forces from the water component. So in that case, there, there definitely will be the hydrostatic component. So hydrostatic component will be there. All right, hydrostatic component will be there. And there may be also the hydrodynamic component as well. All right, so we have to make sure that uh, what kind of condition actually prevails 
all right so if the soil is in a very loose state if it is in a very loose state and uh, it is the permeability is very high all right so we have to again make sure that what is the hydrostatic stresses for from the water component all right and that if there is development of hydrodynamic component as well and we have to assess that which is the critical condition which is the critical condition all right now for the restrained pore water condition it is uh, for the restrained pore water condition we can easily uh, take into account the i mean the pore waters uh, the i mean the pore water pressures so in that case what we do is we take help of the pore, pore pressure ratio all right so so that is a pore pressure ratio all right and in that case the unit weight is taken as so the total unit weight into 1 minus ru all right so that is the uh, i mean density unit weight which is used in the mo equation all right so in that equation when we will calculate the active earth pressure or the passive earth pressure so in that case we will use this particular unit weight all right and the angle of the resultant weight all right so w so we have uh, w kv and w kh all right and this is psi all right so the angle psi is now given by will be now be given by tan inverse of it is we have to consider the gamma saturated in case of the horizontal acceleration all right into kh and while in the vertical one what we will consider is that we will consider this particular unit weight so this will be 1 minus uh, sorry 1 minus kv this will be 1 minus kv Now, in this case, if we consider this particular conditions, so here we have considered the hydrodynamic case, so we have to also consider the hydrostatic case, all right? So we have to also consider the hydrostatic case. So we have up till now considered the hydro con hydrodynamic condition. So to consider the hydrostatic case, what we will do is, uh, we will again add additional trust all right additional trust so based on so unit weight which will be an equivalent unit weight which will be considered as unit weight of water plus <coughs> pore pressure ratio into unit weight of total bulk unit weight okay so that particular unit weight so into height into height will give additional hydrostatic trust on this back of the retaining wall okay so in the limiting case obviously what will happen is that in the limiting case when the pore water pressure is uh, equal to the I mean this uh, um, uh, total stress uh, sorry the effective stress all right so in that case definitely there it is a, like a liquefaction scenario so in that case we will consider the gamma saturated as the 
gamma equivalent all right and that particular additional thrust will again come onto the wall all right so that is of course the i mean extreme case of if there is such kind of conditions develop where pore water pressure is equal to pore water pressure ratio is in it becomes equal to one that means u is equal to sigma and of course as uh, we have discussed in the previous class as we have discussed in the previous class we can very simply uh, consider the average unit weight which is um, the square unit weight into gamma saturated plus 1 minus lambda square into gamma bulk so this is the gamma bulk all right and this is the gamma saturated and this is lambda h so lambda is the factor defining the depth of pore water with height of the retaining wall so we have this equivalent or average i mean average unit weight based on relative volumes of the soil and the i mean the saturated and the partially saturated soil right but in this case also in this case also we have to consider if if there is uh, development of additional hydrostatic or hydrodynamic condition okay so another way to consider that is we i mean uh, we obtain different values of the i mean the earth pressure coefficients we obtain the different values of earth pressure coefficients to include the water pressure at the depth so here this is the water table all right so here k a dash so this is again we consider the submerged condition so here the gum i mean the submerged unit weight is considered all right submerged unit weight is considered and using that all right so we have two again uh, i mean components one is for the static case one is for the pseudo static case all right so here this is for the top portion and this is for the bottom portion all right so that is how we take into account the soil water uh, i mean water table at the back of the retaining wall now whatever we have discussed up till now is based on rigid body motion all right so we have considered uh, we have considered the uh, the soil mass or the wedge which is behind the wall we have considered the uh, wedge behind the wall as a rigid body okay and whenever the uh, i mean there is an earthquake the entire body moves all right and we obtain an acceleration and we have given a coefficient of acceleration to the entire weight of that wedge all right so we consider that that entire wedge uh, behind the retaining wall it is horizontally accelerating in one particular direction and in that case what will be the forces on the wall now stead stedman and zeng all right so in uh, 1990 so what they said that it is somewhat possible to include certain 
dynamic characteristics into the I mean solution into the solution in a relatively simpler manner all right so in 1990 so what they said that we can include some uh, dynamic characteristics all right in a in a simplified manner So here what they did is they considered a cantilever wall. Okay, so they considered a cantilever wall. So they considered one cantilever wall and it is fixed at the base. Okay, and it is fixed at the base. And the base is subjected to a harmonic horizontal acceleration. Alright. So this base it is going in this direction. Alright, and then in this direction. So it is given a harmonic excitation in this manner okay so at any depth what they told what they I mean uh, propose is that at any depth due to this particular motion all right so we will have an acceleration given by so this is a h is the amplitude of the motion so a h is the maximum acceleration all right given here Right, and a h sine of omega all right into t minus h minus z by v s all right so v s is the velocity of shear wave So h by z, h minus z is this depth. Sorry, h minus z is this length over here. All right. So when this particular motion is given here, so when a particular motion is given here, so a h is the amplitude here. All right. So this particular motion it will travel up. All right. So at any point z at a distance z all right so the acceleration at that point at the time t all right acceleration at the point z at time t it can be given by a h sine into omega into t minus h minus z so h minus z is this by velocity of shear wave so i hope you can make out it is very easy to see so what is the motion here at this point it will be definitely a h sin of omega t Alright, and h minus z by v s v s is basically the phase lag. Is basically the phase lag from here to here. So that is the phase lag. Alright, so it is very easy to make out. So this base it is moving at h a h sin omega t. So it is moving like this, like this. It is going on. Alright. So when it is going on, so there is a wave which is traveling up. Alright. So distance divided by velocity is the time lag is the time lag all right so t minus that time lag so that is the acceleration at that point a z t all right so now we have a z 
t here so we know that suppose this mass so uh, we let us consider this mass here right so this mass here so this is the mass here all right so if it is moving at an acceleration of a z t so mass into acceleration is the force at that point all right so mass into acceleration is the force at that point so we have to now integrate all of this forces all right now mz m is also a function of z obviously okay so what will be mz it will be unit weight of this strip all right what will be the length of the strip it will be h minus z so h minus z so this is h minus z and it will be sec of uh, this this particular uh, sorry i mean uh, 90 degree minus alpha so it will be tan of 90 degree minus alpha this this particular angle all right so mz so mz m at particular z will be unit weight at that point divided by g all right so that is the unit weight i mean uh, sorry the density that is the density all right now we have to find out what is the length of this unit so it will be h minus z so h minus z is this length okay then it will be tan of 90 minus alpha okay so we can say tan of 90 minus alpha is also equal to tan of alpha okay so it will be divided by tan of alpha okay so mind you alpha is this angle okay alpha is this angle here not this one and of course we consider the thickness so thickness will be dz all right so thickness will be dz <laughs> so thickness will be dz so ultimately what we have to do is to get this qh all right so qh will be at any time t okay at any time t this is a function of t now at any time t it will be summation of 0 to h 0 to h so this particular function m z a z t dz okay so that is the summation there so ultimately using this particular uh, integration all right so uh, stedman stedman and zing so they gave nineteen ninety they gave correlations for the active earth pressure all right active earth pressure and also they gave how the forces behind this wall all right the function of the forces behind this wall will vary with time okay so they give various functions so uh, that is uh, uh, maybe in the 
next class or in the i mean if if time permits we will definitely discuss that in detail afterwards or as well so this is a basic introduction of what is basically the pseudo dynamic analysis so it is not purely dynamic neither it is purely pseudo static all right so here it is the forces is are a function of time the forces qh are a function of time as you can see so it is dynamic first of all but why pseudo then pseudo because it is not considering the actual behavior of the retaining wall and the soil mass what it is considering is that uh, it is assuming that the wall and the soil mass it behaves as a cantilever i mean uh, locked at this position or fixed at this position all right so it is assuming that this is a cantilever fixed at this position all right so this is a pseudo dynamic analysis so yeah we have the dynamic horizontal dynamic thrust all right with time so how it varies so it has been uh, given by statement and zhang in 1990 and obviously they have also given a coefficient of i mean active air pressure which is also a function of time okay so that is what they have given so it is already time so in the next class we will discuss about the displacement analysis of the retaining wall and soil right so before going to that you may look into the new marks displacement method all right so uh, the first method which was given by uh, richard and alms all right in 1979 uh, they gave this particular method all right so it is a very easy method where they have considered one fixed i mean strength of the or the i mean free, fixed resistance shearing resistance of the uh, retaining wall and if it exceeds there is displacement and if it goes below there is no displacement and again if it exceeds there is displacement so ultimately we integrate the displacement with so displacement stoppage displacement stoppage displacement so it, it goes in this manner okay so we will of course discuss this in detail in the next class so we will stop for today okay just wait